Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make a cyclonic collection can for my DeWalt planer that I've got. I've seen a lot of ideas on YouTube here as I researched it to try to figure out how do I want to build mine. And I came up with an idea here that takes into part a lot of the videos that I saw, plus something I came up with on my own also. What I got was this Rockler Dust Right Collection uh, separator components for the separator can, which are these that they go in and they create a vortex in the can. And this also came with a really good uh, plan on how to make a collection dustbin uh, with your or planer sitting right on top of it. And that works pretty great uh, if that's all you're going to do with it. Um, mine, I've got this flip top work stand where I've got my oscillating sander on it, my rigid oscillating sander on one side and then my planer on the other side. So when I flip them, I don't have any space for a dust collection bin underneath it all. So what I need to do is try and make use of some of the things I already have in the shop because my shop is pretty small and I really have to take advantage of the space that I can. So what we need to do is to mount these into this lid. It comes with my trash can. What I got is this Brute trash can from Home Depot. It's a 32 gallon. The lid fits on it. Snaps on pretty good and secure. And I found out that, well, these come apart, and then when they go through the hole, they'll screw together here on these threads and secure. And I found out that this fits in uh, to this pretty good. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap on the side, and I can probably fill that in a little bit with some caulk or something like that. So that's what I'm going to do is do that. That way, all I'm adding to my shop is lid, which I already had anyway, long, but I wasn't using it. And then these uh, ports on here to make it a vortex in the can. And the can I've already got, got it on wheels because I wheeled around my shop all the time for different work locations and so forth. And I can put the bags in it, I suppose, and collect the, uh, the chips from the planer and that, and we'll see how this works. So stay tuned. All right, one of the first things I'm going to do is this um, kit comes with these two white stick-on labels that I'm going to stick on here. And I'm going to locate them where these handles are at here. I'm going to locate these opposite of that so that they're not in the way when I want to pull that up to get the lid off. So I'm going to locate these on these ends here. I'll stick the labels on. That'll guide me for making the holes so that I can fit these into there. Okay, I have put these labels on here, perpendicular or whatever, from these handles so they won't get in the way when I want to lift. And I started laying out the label here for this up close to this edge here in, the mis in this middle circle, so to speak, um, because it's a sharp edge. And these labels are a little bit wider than the space between here. And so I just laid it out and let it curve up a little bit against there. And when I set this on here, I see that it's still a really good fit that... Uh, this is going to work well. Like I said, these two surfaces here will keep this flange from seating all the way to the bottom. But still, I have enough space in here. I can cut that up. I have enough space in here. So I'll have plenty of thread to get a grab and keep this secured. And then I'll just caulk around these edges to seal it up from leaking any chips out. So. I'm going to move on and get these holes made. I think what I'll do is probably drill a bunch of holes 
and then work with something or like a utility knife or something to enlarge in these holes to the size that I need. All right, so I've set my lid here on top of a um, scrap piece of wood here I can use as a backer as I drill these holes out. I'm going to drill it out with this and try and get myself fairly in line. Try to make a lot of holes here so that I can cut it out without having to go long stretches with my utility knife. Okay, I'll do that with the other hole here. And then start cutting that out with the utility knife. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm going around these holes and between these holes. I'm just scoring a line with my razor knife. And go over and over it several times until finally the razor knife goes all the way through and I'll do that with all these holes all the way around and then I can go back and kind of clean up any rough edges and make sure that this fits in correctly all right so I went around got this one all carved out so I've got this hole here and I went around and kind of tweaked and trimmed the side of this opening until this made a good fit into it and fairly snug and that fits great and on the other side you can see I've got enough thread there for the other piece to fit on now thread on I get that point in one direction tighten up this other side here good snug Okay, so I got that, I got this part, so this will work great. I'll put the other one in here, I'll point this, go in that direction, to create that uh, vortex that we need. So, I have my lid cut up where I've got these cyclonic adapters in here to create the cyclonic motion in the trash can for collecting all the debris. On the top side, I've got the parts here where the line from the planer will connect into one of these and the other one probably going to take out to my shop vac. Um, the planer has a fan that blows the debris out as it is so it doesn't need a whole lot of help to get around in there I don't think. I think I'll disconnect my shop vac from its cyclonic filter system and just connect my shop vac directly onto this with an adapter because these are four inch hoses. Coming from the planer, that's a four inch hose, and I like to keep it at that because that'll give me the best flow, at least to get into the can. And then coming out of here, we just want to provide some suction or to pull some of the air out of the can to help create this cyclonic action in there and capture everything. So I'll move on and get this on top of the trash can, then get it all connected up with my planer and my shop vac. Well, to try and give you a view of what I'm trying to do here with this planer dust collector, got my planer set up here. Got my screwdriver on the table there. And the boards will feed in through here. Then it's going to come out of the dust board on the back here. And then the hose is going to connect over into my trash can here. It's got the cyclonic diverters in it. Then this hose is going to go directly into my shop vac down here. And I'm bypassing the cyclonic collector on my shop vac and just going straight into my shop vac with this hose here from the other cyclonic collector here. No use in doing it twice. And I think the smaller one may kind of plug up faster given that the chips coming off of a planer are relatively large. Small, but still bigger than your common sawdust. So this gives another view of the back end 
of the uh, planer where the wood will come out and the dust collection here coming out there and going down into the separator then further on into the shop vac so next up I'm gonna run some boards through this see how it works everything holds up doesn't leak uh, and all that okay this uh, setup as I got here is relatively decent for doing short boards you know probably four feet or less I'm going to do longer boards I'm going to need to set this up in my shop in a different configuration so I can get more length uh, for feeding things through especially as it get in, gets into winter and I've got snow outside and I don't want to have the door open or be out in the snow. So anyways, I run this through a few times and works pretty well. I uh, haven't looked in here yet to see what the dust collection is, but I'll look at that next. I've got my shop vac set here. I've got this remote switch for operating my shop vac. I notice I get a little blowout coming out of these here, but I haven't caulked these yet. So I'll caulk these up around those and that should seal up any dust from blowing out. So I'll run this through a couple times and see how this goes. All right, next I'll take this apart here and we'll take a look inside the can here and see how well that worked. I had some stuff in there in the can already, some trash already, but I'll see how that works and I'll see what I wind up with inside my shop vac also. All right, this is the inside of my shop vac. Looks like it did a pretty good job collecting a lot of dust chips. Then over here is the inside of my shop vac and it's fairly relatively clean for what I did compared to all the chips in the trash can here. So I think this works and it's just a matter of kind of setting up a train of things but to me all I'm adding in is a lid to my existing trash can here. I'm not adding another cyclonic unit just using uh, some of the stuff I already have in the shop so I'm not adding taking away more space to the small shop that I've got. So, I like this. I'm going to do some work on the underside of my lid for my trash can, which now serves double duty as a trash can and a cyclonic collector. And what I need to do is to seal up and caulk around these holes here to seal them up so it doesn't blow dust out like it was doing on me. So I carefully removed these off of here by holding on to the other end so it wouldn't get out of position it would stay good and tight where it's at then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this clear uh, flexible sealant it's a DAP, DAP sealant I picked up at Home Depot and I'll put this around these and get them sealed in and then to clean off the excess caulk I love to use this DAP tool it's really great at cleaning up caulk lines, making things really nice and neat and looking good. So, and also helps to push the caulk into some of the crevices so that it really gets a good seal. So I'm going to get that done up and then I'll get back to you here. All right, so I took this caulk, went around these and got the uh, caulk in there and then I went around and cleaned it up with this tool and I like the flexible caulk because I'll be taking this lid on and off the trash can and it's going to flex a bit as I do that so I like to use the flexible caulk. Now I'll let this set up for a little bit see if it sinks in and if I need to uh, top off any further voids or not and then I'll screw these caps back on here and it'll be done with this part. Well, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and got some ideas from it and how to make your uh, planer, chip collector, um, vortex, or 
cyclonic collector like I did, except that I used my existing trash can to do it, and all I had to do was add a lid to it in order to do that. So hopefully maybe you can take this idea and run with it and make something of your own and make it useful for you. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, please give me your comments. I want to hear what you like to see and also some suggestions and any ideas that I can use to make things better. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss anything. So, the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you. Thank you.